We were fortunate to, uh, to have visited him in July. Uh, for those that don't know, I've been in the military for 22 years. Uh, I retired, did another five, another two. So I've been there, I've been away for a lot. That's why you don't really get to see a whole lot of my pictures um, with us and my um, other, other family. Next <laughs> as my ex Nicole, and my son Maurice, my baby boy, 15 years old, he just turned 15. Uh, this is our script uh, yesterday. A uh, little funny story, he was born in Japan. And when he was born, um, I called home and said, the baby's here, baby Maurice is here. And my dad was so excited because when I called, it was the 25th of September in the United States, but in Japan, it was the 26th of September. So even though they didn't share a birthday, they really did. So yeah, that's my baby boy. He's taller than me now. He got a size 12 shoe. He's a big boy. And he hates when I say that. So, I love you. And I just hope that you and your other two brothers who couldn't be here can be half the man that he was. He's amazing. Uh, so yeah, there you go. I went on script. Uh, but yeah, luckily we got to spend time with him here in July. Uh, I was gone so long, uh, and I just knew going moving to Alabama that I was going to be within six hours driving distance, and I can see him all the time now. Uh, like I said, at least luckily I was able to see him one more time. If I could have one more day with him, I would tell him over and over and over again that I love him. I would embrace every second and enjoy his laughter and the smile that lit up an entire room. All those pictures that you're seeing, he was always smiling. That wasn't just for the camera. Um, Jessica said, looking at uh, the body earlier, that was the first time she seen him not smiling. Uh, he just always smiled, always laughed, always loved. And that's where I get it from. I'm a very funny guy. Thank you for laughing. Um, I talked to him every day, and as a matter of fact, I, I heard him the other day. Um, Mom was out, so I was doing some stuff around the house, and I was uh, pulling some weeds in the front, and I could just hear him yelling, that's not a weed, that's not a weed. And I got nervous, I really did, because it was bulbs at the bottom. So Mom came home and I asked her, I said, did you used to have flowers in the front? She said, no, those are weeds. I was like, Ooh, thank you. <laughs> so, I didn't kill anything. And then I heard him laughing. <laughs> so, you know, that's also a funny story, too, because uh, my nickname growing up was Afraid of Work, which wasn't true. I wasn't afraid of work. I just didn't like doing it. I'd rather be down <laughs> playing basketball or something. But, you know, I was out there pulling weeds. Uh, let's see. As you all know, he had a heart of gold, and he would do anything he could for his friends, family, and even strangers. Um, washing machine, I wrote down some bullets here, so just a couple stories. I, I apologize if I go on and on, but this is it. So. Washing machine, I wrote that down because I remember as a child, um, my father had a bad back, well he always has, uh, sciatic nerve, uh, but he never let that stop him from helping helping other people. Uh, I remember, and again, I don't have the greatest memory, but from what I remember, uh, he was sitting down in a chair, and my mom was on the phone with somebody, and they needed help moving a refrigerator, or washer, dryer, or something like something heavy that somebody with a bad back probably should not be lifting. And without hesitation, I just remember him standing up, making that old man, my back pain, my back hurts sound, you know, and then proceeded to go and help move a large, Appliance. Uh, again, he, he never let any of that bother him. I wrote down Diet Coke. Apparently, it was a Diet Pepsi. So you heard that story again. And I just pictured him sneaking a pop Pepsi. I'm like, you know, and he was smuggling drugs or something into the old Pepsi. <laughs> just to, just to make them happy. Uh, during I've been here since Wednesday, and uh, just a couple of stories just immediately uh, hit me. Um, and I'm going for walks around the block. And I met a neighbor and I told him, uh, you know, I was visiting my parents, told him John and Mary, and they were like, oh my gosh, John. Uh, and they loved the fact that uh, their husband was uh, actually um, going by. I don't know if you're in the audience, if you are. Uh, hopefully I'm telling the story right. If not, it sounds good. But um, he would sit outside. You know, I really had a hard time seeing 
but my dad would always go up to him and, and speak to him and uh, just make him feel good, you know, that somebody actually oh. cared, because that's who he was. He loved everybody. Strangers, didn't matter. Um, he always used to see God. Oh, there was another guy when we went to the forest, said that uh, he was a part of the church for however many years and never became a, you know, a, a member of the church. Um, and he used to belong to a different denomination. Um, and, but what he really always loved was my dad would always seek him out. He would you know, find him in the church every single week, you know, make him feel loved, go up there and speak to him. He was very genuine. None of this was just, just to do it, just to be nice. He genuinely loved everybody. Um, praying for strangers he would meet and when he learned of their struggles. I remember my dad going to the hospital and he would meet somebody and they would talk about, oh, my daughter, my son, my grandchild, whatever is going through this. And even though he's in the hospital going through something, he would sit there and pray for them. Uh, and that, to me, that was just beautiful. Like, he just, one, communicate with anybody who's a social butterfly, like myself, I get told. Um, but it, it didn't matter. Whatever he was going through, it didn't matter. He was going to be there to help out others. Uh, another beautiful thing. Uh, two more quick stories, sorry. Um, I remember him when I was uh, younger playing baseball and he would show up to uh, I just pinched my butt to stop me from crying. <laughs> I think Jeannie said to do that. <laughs> so, and it worked. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I remember baseball practice. My dad would come there after work and still be in his uniform. And as a child, through a child's eyes, I was embarrassed. My dad was still wearing his uniform. Um, I don't know why, but it, it just it, it embarrassed me. Um, and then later on in life, realizing that was just who he was. He was not going to let anything keep him from being at his kids' baseball games. Christine played softball once, I think. That, that didn't turn out too well. <laughs> uh, but I was swimming, which I thought I was good until Christine told me I wasn't. <laughs> but uh, he didn't let work keep him from coming to see me. You know, you know, he was tired or it was too late, so I gotta stop home and get dressed. No, he came right there for us. He was always there for us um, from the beginning to the end, and I really appreciated that. And then the last one I had on here was arthritis prayer. So for those that don't know me, uh, I used to have juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, which is never supposed to go away, right? Um, but I had that when I was three to six, got it again when I was nine, and then it flared back up when I was 12. But I always remember my dad praying for me. Um, and while I think, well, I thought it fell in deaf ears, um, that's probably not even the right word. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, sorry. He would pray to take the pain away from me and give it to him. Now, if you think about that, I couldn't walk. I couldn't bend my arm. I couldn't bend my back. I couldn't move. And he said, give that to me. I'll take it. So he don't have to suffer. And when I think back, this happens. But again, that's who he was. And I still, I hate talking in past tense. I wish I could say that's who he is. But I thank him for that, and then that passed that on to me. I don't know if it's falling on your ears, but that's always been my prayer. Whenever you guys are sick or hurt, I'll do anything. I'll take, take, give me that pain, I'll take it. So, he's passed that down to me. He's passed down a lot of things to everybody in here. I know he's in heaven right now. Being thanked by so many people. That was another song, Tim Childers, which beautiful job with uh, the two singers. I apologize, mm -hmm. but, but um, I love when Tim used to sing uh, "Thank You." We talked about this earlier. Um, it, it's a song about you know went to heaven and you were there with me. See, I can't sing it, but uh, <laughs> he sang it so beautifully. But uh, part of that was here, you know, just talking about how he's being in heaven right now and being thanked by so many people for the little things that he had done and the sacrifices made. But he would never think of it as a sacrifice because he genuinely loved making people happy and laugh and making their lives just a little bit better. He lived his life Christ-like. Was he perfect? Absolutely not. 
Not at all, but he would always say he was close. He didn't. <laughs> he passed that down to me because I think I'm pretty close to perfection. <laughs> um, he faced his demons earlier in his life and he conquered them. He did not allow his addiction to control him or define him, but he could only do that by the loving prayer of God and the strong spiritual support and love of my mother. That and she was about to stab him to death if he didn't change his ways. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, I'm serious. <laughs> we'll save the rest of the story outside the church. <laughs> he would not be who he was without her. I enjoyed talking to him and hearing mom in the background telling him what to say, finishing his sentences for him, uh, telling, uh, and helping him remember things. His memory started to go. Mine started about 10 years ago. But... Uh, uh, and, and I remember, oh, yeah. And it was also fun when he learned how to finally hang up on video chat. You know, but don't be teasing me when I get older. But trying to teach uh, an older person how to use technology it can be a, uh, a little bit of a struggle. Um, but actually, real quick, so my middle son actually got me Marcellus one time. I was on the phone with him, uh, and he said, What's that behind you? I said, What? By the time I turned around, He'd already hung up on me, so I was like, oh, that's good. <laughs> he got me, he got me. So the next time I was on the phone with mom and dad, I did that. And I was like, hey, what's that behind you? And they turned around and I hung up on them. And uh, then they called back, what was behind us? <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing. It was just a joke. But then I told Marcellus, and he was like, you can't do that to them. I was like, you did it to me. <laughs> but... Uh, so then he, uh, he he would get a kick out of that right before it's time to hang up. He would, you know, he would hang up on me. And uh, so speaking of talking to old people on the phone, I talked to Ellen the other day. <laughs> How you doing, Ellen? Good to see you. Uh, Pops definitely left this world better than the way he found it, and it is my wish that we all allow him to live through us and do the same. Lord, I ask that you remind me daily to not only be Christ-like but to be like Him. Whether that's by volunteering at a senior center, a homeless shelter, conversating with a janitor at work, uh, buying a meal for the family behind you, opening doors, just showing genuine concern for others, including strangers. Uh, that's what I want, for people to see him through me, and I hope that you will all do the same. I want to end this by sharing that the, uh, the most amazing thing that I ever seen from, from my dad, uh, and I'll probably just go off script here, but the... He went in for a triple, triple bypass. When was that? November. Oh, you said you want to go speak. You just did. <laughs> he went uh, in for a triple bypass in November, and uh, it shook me, shook Christine, Lori, John, shook all of us, because uh, even back then it was just too soon for him to go. Um, and I remember talking to him on the phone before, uh, the night before the surgery, and it was amazing how at peace he was. He told me, it's okay. He said, if I go, it's okay. I know where I'm going. And it was just the most beautiful thing you could, I mean, of course I didn't want to go, uh, but just to know somebody just to be that much at peace with dying. I mean, if you sit there right now and think about, this could be my last day, that's scary. Now I'll go back to the script. I know my dad would love for this to end by saying if you are someone that wants to have that feeling of certainty on where you're going after this life and you want that same kind of peace, we'd like to invite you to come up here. John, that's your cue. This means come. <laughs> this is Pastor John, everybody. So All right. I'll let him take it from here. But if, if that's something that you want, if you don't know where you're going after today, after this life, and you want to know, Pastor John. You didn't write my script? No. <laughs> Proud of my brother. He did a great job. Yeah, man. My dad loved all of us. He was very proud of my sister Lori and all of her kids. He was proud of my brother and all of his kids. My sister Christine and her kid. And I know he's proud of me. He 
you tell me. It's fun to look at and see so many fun faces and the impacts and the stories. And you hear the story of my brother where my dad would say, if I could take his pain, I would. It's the prayer of a parent. And that's the life of Jesus. So I'll take their pain. I'll take their sin. So that they could be free and that they could be whole. My dad today is free and he's whole. Amen. You hear the stories of my dad and the smile and the laughter, but that wasn't always my dad. It's fun for me to tell people when I tell them my story that I don't come from a line of pastors in my family. Or priests or nuns. <laughs> it's just me. But to hear my dad did a funeral, I just found out dad did a funeral. I know that he overcame some dark things in his life. He overcame addictions and struggles and habits and hurts. The only way that he did that was through this father named Jesus who said, I'll take it. I'll take the struggle, the habits, the hurts, the hangups. I'll take it so that you could live this life of freedom. And I'm so glad that both my mom and dad gave their life to Jesus. It was that decision that changed the trajectory of our family. And it's because of that decision we know that he's in heaven today. And if you hear my dad today, tell him about Jesus. Just tell him one more time. And I think the best way to honor the life and the legacy of my dad would be if we'd all be in a right relationship with the Lord so that we could all see him in heaven one day. And I don't know your church background, church history, church pain. And I can say at this point, my dad would tell you, none of that matters. What matters is a relationship between you and the Lord. That's what gets you into heaven, not a church membership. Not how much you gave, but now how much you hurt. It's that relationship. Would you take a moment just to close your eyes and bow your heads? It's the honest question is, are you in a right relationship with the Lord? And if not, today would be that day honor his life and his legacy and all that he did from neighbors to friends to family to strangers so that they can know the love of a father who's willing to take the sin and the pain and the past. So today if you're not in a right relationship with the Lord but you say man I want to make some changes the Bible says it's as simple as confessing your mouth and believing in your heart that he is Lord. I want to encourage you to do that right there at your seat. Lord, forgive me of my sins. It's the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Forgive me for my trespasses and for those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation deliver us from you. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.